Hello, for those of you that are just joining us, I am Kathy Beekman and I'll be facilitating today's webinar. And our webinar today is How to Approach an Art Gallery. So I'll be your host for the next 60 minutes. And in order for us to get the most for our value today, I strongly encourage you to take notes. So hopefully you have a notepad and pen available. So first, a little bit about myself. I own a business which I created called Beekman Fine Art and Design. This is a business that incorporates a number of different creative activities. I am first and foremost a professional artist. I've been an artist since the age of four, and presently I make the bulk of my living by painting landscapes such as the one that you see here. I exhibit at a number of galleries, participate in art festivals, jury exhibitions, and exhibit and jury shows and also instruct adult workshops and private painting lessons. I am also an art career coach, or if you'd like, a creative entrepreneur advisor by helping to build confidence in other artists while also giving them the tools that they need to reach their artistic goals. While creating 2D art, I found that it was much more cost effective if I framed my own art. I've been a professional framer since 1993 and have framed artwork for artists as well as museums. Most recently, I independently published a book I titled Prosper, a success book for artists. This book can be found online with Amazon and Barnes and Noble. With this said, this webinar is based on my own practical experiences. How to approach an art gallery. So what do I mean when I say how to approach an art gallery? What I mean is how can you become an artist that is represented by an art gallery? To become such an artist, there are steps that you should take in order to successfully approach any gallery. And this is an image of a gallery that represents my work and it's in Santa Fe, New Mexico and it's called Canyon Road Contemporary Art. So there's types of galleries that we should all be aware of. There's the alternative space gallery, the privately owned gallery, the cooperative, the internet gallery, and the vanity gallery. The actions an artist need to take in order to become represented by a gallery have, have not been plucked out of the air. I know it works because I've been on both sides of the fence as an art director of a gallery and also as a working professional. There are a number of different kinds of galleries, and first let's take a look at this alternative space gallery. It's a gallery space made available to artists without representation. So this means that there isn't someone that's actively selling your artwork. And we're talking about spaces such as library spaces, coffee houses, and perhaps a space that has not yet been leased, and so it's an empty space that the owner of that space is looking to have filled momentarily. There's the privately owned gallery. This is my favorite kind of gallery in which I like to be represented by. It's a more typical gallery space. They do ask for commission which I am very happy to give because I am not paying for, for the mortgage that sometimes reaches as high as $5,000 for a very small space. Um, they actively sell and advertise. We also have the cooperative gallery. A cooperative gallery is a gallery that is owned by the artists themselves. There is a fee to belong and a commission that is given to the gallery as well as meetings that are to be attended and you're usually also asked to sit the gallery if not for one day a month for a certain number of hours depending on how many active cooperative artists you have within that gallery. There's the internet gallery. There's usually again a fee to belong. Uh, there's contests that happen. There's a focus on a particular medium or artist throughout the month. Uh, the nice thing about this is that there is worldwide exposure but again there's not someone actively selling your artwork and then last there is the vanity gallery this is a gallery that will rent their space to artists and usually buy the square foot you can expect to pay anywhere from twenty five dollars a month to more than one thousand dollars a month sometimes it is up to you to do the selling if the gallery does not receive a commission this type of gallery space I try and stay clear of. 
a lot of gallery spaces in New York work on this vanity gallery system. And I don't know that there's a month that goes by that I don't receive an email from a vanity gallery in New York telling me that they have looked at my website, absolutely love my artwork, and would like to represent me. And when I look at their contract, it states that I am to pay $1,000 a month in order to be represented by them. So I do stay clear of the vanity galleries. So how nice to know that you are in control. You are in control of creating your own success story. Now here I have some do's and do don'ts when it comes to getting into a gallery. So first, absolutely look for galleries and do not wait for the gallery to find you. Um, long ago, <laughs> there were galleries that actively seeked out artists, and, and they're still there, but not as plentiful as they were, say, in the 70s or 80s. Absolutely look for galleries, um, because they're not going to be coming knocking at your door. Recognize that you are the best at what you do. You are the absolute best at what you do. No one else can create the glaze that you can for your ceramic pot and no one else can paint a landscape just as you do. We are all individuals and it shows in our artwork. Now let's take risks. Where there are no risks, there are no achievements. So gosh darn it, approach a gallery and make that first call. It can be a scary thing, but if you don't do it, you're not going to get anywhere. And never think that there are no galleries that will take your artwork. Again, you're the best at what you do, and there is a market for all kinds of artwork, uh, meaning there is a gallery for absolutely every sort of artwork that has been created. <clears throat> do your research, and we'll talk about this a little later. You're going to want to research that gallery that you want to approach. Know yourself as an artist. Know what it is that you're creating and why, and be able to explain why it is that you're creating it, and be able to explain what kind of art artist that you are. Do not let your artwork sit in storage. <laughs> it does no one any good um, when your artwork is sitting on the floor of your studio space or in that closet. Get your artwork out there, show it in a coffee shop, or um, again, approach a gallery so that your artwork's hanging on the walls. Know your artwork, we talked a little bit about that, and focus on your wants. Believe that you will find a gallery and that it will be a good fit. Do not focus on your fears. Positive attitude will get you what you want, and negative attitude will get you absolutely nowhere your fears will become your reality. So focus on your wants. And work on instinct and not impulse. Do move forward on your insti instinct and, and impulse. If you happen to be in a gallery and you have your business card on hand and it feels like a, a good fit and you're feeling up to it, by all means approach the person behind the receptionist desk and ask them if they're, they're looking at portfolios and how they will do so and when. Um, don't sit on your duff <laughs> and don't delay and when the opportunity is there take it. So where can we look for galleries? One of the first places I always look is the internet. You can google keywords such as galleries, gallery exhibits, um, art gallery, gallery guide, and where to find artwork. Look through the phone book for um, art galleries and cooperative art galleries. They're all listed there. And uh, if you're like me, I'm someone that lives in the Rocky Mountains. I have multiple phone books for Denver, Evergreen, um, and so on. Uh, you can also go online again and um, look at these galleries uh, in the yellow pages online. And network. This is most valuable. Uh, there's artist associations and guilds. Uh, attending art receptions is invaluable and art conferences and a group of art friends. There are always people that may be one step ahead of you and have already experienced the gallery world. Ask them, how is it that you got into the gallery that you're in, or do you know of any galleries that you feel that my artwork be a good fit? Let's research the gallery. This is a must. 
When you find a gallery that you feel you might be a good fit with, you need to look at them a little closer. Go online. Do they have a website? If they don't have a website, uh, that can be a scary thing because if they're out of your reach, meaning perhaps they're two, three, four, 12 hours from your studio location, how will you know if they're still in business? Also, how is it that they're reaching out to others that perhaps will never be in the location of their physical gallery? The website is an invaluable tool nowadays for galleries, and if they're not using it, again, I tend to stay clear of that gallery. Is the staff professional and courteous? If you have the opportunity to walk into the gallery, does the staff approach you and welcome you? Uh, are they able to answer questions? Uh, same thing goes for if you give them a call. Are they professional and courteous on the phone? If they're not professional and courteous to you, then they're not going to be to their other patrons. Does your work, your artwork, fall within their price range? If your work is presently priced at $300 and you have done your research and find that the artwork in this present gallery ranges from $1,000 up to $8,000, you're not within their price range. So you do not want to approach them quite yet unless you're willing to change your pricing to match theirs. Would you buy artwork at this gallery? There's something that a lot of artists don't think about. Is the gallery clean? If you're allergic to dogs or scared of dogs and there's a big dog as soon as you walk into the gallery, is this a place that you feel other patrons are going to feel welcomed into? Are they able to answer questions about their artists? If they are unable to answer what sort of medium the artist is working in or how it is that they create their artwork or how long they've been in the art business, meaning the artists that you're questioning about, they're probably not going to be able to answer questions about you as an artist if they were to represent you. Is their artwork present in the gallery that is similar to yours? If there is, this gallery is most likely not going to represent another artist with similar subject matter and using the same medium. What is the price range within the gallery? And we discussed this. I do want to tell a little story, and that is the first gallery I approached in Santa Fe, New Mexico, that accepted me as one of their in-house artists had prices that were out of the range of my own artwork. I quickly repriced my artwork, calculating in my head what the price of my art artwork should be if I were to want to be represented by this gallery. And I had approached them in person, so I had a, a quick chance to look at the pricing and compare it to my own. When asked what my pricing was, I told them the price that they wanted to hear, and voila, I became an artist within that gallery, letting you know that you should go ahead and contact other artists selling at the gallery and to see if they're happy being represented by this particular gallery. Are they getting paid on time? Do they feel that they're getting uh, the same amount of space within the gallery to show their artwork? Have they had a one-person show? and other questions that you feel will be necessary to make you happy as an artist showing in the gallery. Is the artwork properly lit? There can always be a ill-lit area in the gallery that never receives light. And if they're showing artwork in that area, no good. You need the artwork to be well lit in order to sell it. So make sure that they are lighting the area properly and that the gallery is clean. Does the gallery return calls or emails? If they don't return your own emails or calls, they're not going to do so for other patrons. How long has the gallery been in business? Now, I'm not saying don't go with a gallery that's just starting up their business, but it is best to go with a gallery that's been in business for a while because they've begun to understand and realize the ins and outs of the gallery business and how to sell artwork. And because perhaps they've been in business for three or four years, they will continue to be in business. Is, it, is the gallery easy to find? Is it easy to find parking? If it is not, then it's not going to be easy for the patrons to partake in what the gallery has to offer. 
and do they con keep consistent hours? If they don't keep consistent hours, it's gonna turn the patron off and they're just simply not gonna have as many sales. And do they advertise? And is the space used wisely? What if my art would be the perfect fit for a gallery, but I've not sold at their pricing level as of yet? I gave you an example of myself uh, going into a gallery and readjusting my pricing. Now, I did that, and I had been showing in other galleries and selling on my own. As soon as I decided that I wanted to be in this gallery that priced their work at a higher level than I was presently, I needed to then adjust my pricing across the board. So once I was accepted into that Santa Fe gallery, my artwork on my website, within my studio, and at the other galleries needed to be raised. And this meant also then that some of my pricing was too high for the, the galleries I was showing in. So I had to leave those galleries and find some higher uh, level selling galleries. Okay, so are you ready? What does this mean? <laughs> it means that you must have a good solid body of artwork. A good solid body of artwork is anywhere between 10 and 20 of your strongest pieces of work ready to be sold, ready to be given to a gallery. And you also need a portfolio. We're gonna talk about a portfolio in a moment and what it is that you need in that portfolio to make it strong. And you need a great attitude. Success depends on a single key factor and that is your attitude. So think to yourself, I can't wait to show a gallery my artwork. I love it and someone else out there will love it too. So the first contact, and this is always a scary step for any artist, making that first contact with a gallery, whether it be by email or by phone. So first we've researched the galleries and their website to see if they have any information regarding portfolio reviews. Do this before you call them. Nothing like having the information at your fingertips and they know that it's at your fingertips if you've gone and done a little research about their gallery online and calling them only to have them tell you, well, it's online. So make sure that you check their website first to make sure that the information regarding portfolio reviews is not on there. If it is, they will have told you who will be reviewing the portfolio, when it will be reviewed, and how they would like to see the portfolio, whether that's on a CD, a thumb drive, and we'll go into that a little more in a moment. If they do not have info online, you'll call the gallery and you'll ask, again, who is reviewing the portfolios? Are they looking at portfolios? and how they'd like to see the portfolio. Introduce yourself as an artist looking for representation. So simply call and say, hi, I'm Kathy Beekman. I am a professional artist and I'm just looking to see if you're accepting portfolios at this time. So the portfolio. Here I have a image of a traditional portfolio and those come in a variety of sizes. Some people still use these portfolios and some galleries still look for these kind of portfolios. Nowadays, however, a portfolio is typically presented on a CD or jump drive. And otherwise, a gallery will ask, do you have a website that I can go to? And the website acts as your portfolio. A traditional portfolio case, which I have pictured here, as I said, is still sometimes used and also physical artwork. A gallery may ask, well, we review our artist's work physically, so bring in your work to the gallery and we'll take a look at it. Slides are falling to the wayside, but there are still some galleries that are looking at slides. So what do you put into your portfolio? One of the first things that you want within your portfolio is a cover letter. And the cover letter simply states, that, hey, I'm Kathy Beekman, I'm a professional artist, and I'm looking for representation by your gallery. And it talks a little bit about my artwork, and it closes by welcome, welcoming them to look at my website online. It also gives them contact information. 
Next, I have my artist biography, and that tells the gallery about me, the artist. And I have my artist statement, and that tells the gallery about my artwork. The artist biography is written in third person, and the artist statement is written in first person. We have the resume, and some of you may be saying, well, gosh, I haven't had a gallery, so and not many art shows, so how can I possibly have a resume? Whatever art-related activities you have, you can put on that resume, past and present. So that can belong to an artist association, uh, an advisee within the Create MSU Innovations Program, or I've had a one-person show within my studio. All these types of things can go on a resume. A business card and images. And these images, if they're not being presented in person, meaning physically in person, you will need to list the images separately if you're presenting a CD or a jump drive with their title, sizes, and medium. Those images absolutely must be taken by a professional or if you are an excellent photographer, you need to have professional-like images that are being presented. The color of your artwork must be spot on as well as the overall quality. No fuzzy images and nothing else within the photo itself should be present other than the artwork itself. So if you're presenting in person, so you've called the gallery and they've said, yeah, we're looking at portfolios now, we'd love to meet with you. You're going to want to make sure that you have an agreement at the ready. The agreement will go into the portfolio, but perhaps in a hidden pocket in the back. And this is because if at the end of your, and I quote, interview with the gallery, you will want to make sure that if they say we would like to take you on as an artist, that there is a contract or an agreement that both of you can sign. And you would be surprised at how many galleries do not have an agreement that they've drawn up. So we're going to talk about that in a moment as well. Make sure you have one of those ready. And be prepared to explain specific elements of your artwork. Now that means if the gallery asks, well, this looks like pastel, but it also looks like watercolor. What have you done here to create the look of your said artwork? You need to be able to explain that without hesitating. And you need to be able to tell them what sizes you work in. They'll, they most likely will ask you what is the largest size that you are presently working in. And if it's only an 8 by 10, tell them I work as large as 8 by 10. If it's 5 feet by 6 feet, tell them 5 feet by 6 feet. Be prepared to talk about yourself as an artist. They may very well ask you, how long have you been an artist? If you just began as a artist four months ago and you're a stay-at-home mom with five kids, tell them this. They want to know your story. If you've been an artist your entire life, tell them a little bit about the history of yourself as an artist. And present the portfolio yourself. Do not have your brother, your mother, or your husband take the portfolio into the gallery for you, nor an art representative take it in yourself. And why? It's because the gallery wants to know that you can stand on your own two feet and that you're going to show up for your art receptions and they're also going to want to be able to share your story as an artist with others. If they can't share that story it's going to be much harder for them to sell your artwork. Do you always see a gallery in person? What about internet research? Okay, good. And I think I covered that a little bit. Um, you don't always have the opportunity to go in and see a gallery in person and introduce yourself. Sometimes you never meet the gallery owner or step into the gallery itself. And so you will do most of your research online, absolutely. 
And in a case like this, I absolutely encourage you to contact other artists within this gallery space to see how, the, how they feel about the gallery. And the artists are going to be honest. They may not go into all details. Um, if they're not happy with the gallery for whatever reason, um, but are still represented by the gallery, it's most likely because their sales are good. If they're not receiving their checks, they're probably going to leave the gallery after a short while. Contact a minimum of at least two artists from that gallery and ask them how they like working with them. So the gallery interview. And I call it an interview because you are being asked a lot of questions and you're hopefully going to be accepted into the gallery and therefore accepted as a business partner. It doesn't mean that you're sharing in all the costs of the gallery, but you're both in the business together. So when approaching the gallery in person and they have told you, yes, we want to take a look at your portfolio, come in, let's have a talk, you want to dress appropriately. If the gallery employees wear jeans, don't wear heels and a dress, wear clean clothes and a smile because smiling is contagious. Make eye contact with everyone you meet and be honest. If you have a lim limited time to work on your art, let them know. You're creating the foundation and hope hopefully for a long-term relationship. And galleries want to hear your, your unique story. So if you're the oldest artist they have ever met, play that up. Your own personal history, tell it and they will love you. Be honest and be prepared. You need to be prepared for questions such as, how long have you been an artist? Are you an organized artist? How is your artwork priced? And so within that portfolio, I would not recommend putting prices only because the gallery that you approach you may find the pricing is a little higher than, than your present pricing so you need to be able to verbalize that yes my 8x10 costs $500 so don't have that within the portfolio itself you just you need to know your pricing can you be exclusive to this gallery and if not why what does exclusivity mean? The gallery may have a clause within their agreement, whether it's verbal or written, that they do not want any of their other artists showing within a, a particular amount of miles from their present location. And I know that in Santa Fe, New Mexico, many of the galleries there will not let you show anywhere else within the state of New Mexico. There are other galleries that might not want you showing within a 50 mile radius. And this is for good reason. They want to have you, the artist, exclusive to their gallery because they feel you are special. And if another gallery uh, two blocks down the street from theirs is also selling you, uh, that's going to cut into their bottom line. You're splitting the amount of sales then between two galleries that are very close to one another. You want to also be able to tell the gallery how you create your artwork and where you create it. And galleries like to ask you what your job is and you should be able to answer first and foremost that I am an artist and why is this? This is because if you are an art teacher or an electrician or say a secretary, they don't want to know that you're spending all your time doing those things and not enough time doing your art. They want to know that you're going to have a steady flow of artwork into their gallery. And you can of course be that art teacher, but tell them that first and foremost that you are an artist. So during the portfolio review, Allow the reviewer to take charge while you maintain your self-control. So while the reviewer is looking at the portfolio, make sure that it is laid out in front of them and not in front of you. 
or hand them the portfolio so that they can then place it in front of themselves. Do not hold on to that portfolio yourself. You want them, the reviewer, to feel as though they're in charge. Whether this is a traditional portfolio, a computer, an iPad, or actual artwork, they need to have it in front of them. Make certain that they're holding the portfolio, turning the pages, clicking to the next page, or rotating the sculpture. This makes it feel as though that artwork is theirs already. Encourage them to, to handle the artwork, but don't be pushy. Let the reviewer do most of the talking, and this is because humans like to hear themselves talk, especially when they are nervous. So you most likely will be in a nervous state. You don't want that to show, so try not to talk as much as you usually do. Do not be the one doing all of the talking. Let the reviewer take the lead and allow some silence into the room from time to time. I know that can be uncomfortable, but this is a time for the, the reviewer to be thoughtful in reviewing your art, and they'll like you better for this. So you're in control of creating the perfect situation for them to review your portfolio. You want to be positive and open and keep all negativity at bay. Comment only on the positive points of your artwork. And when someone says, and that is the reviewer, says to you, well, I really like the blues in your glaze that you used here. Don't tell them, well, I really tried to get the green, but I guess that the blues are okay. <laughs> you wanna stay as positive as possible. If you have doubts, keep them to yourself. So if they say, well, I see here that these two paintings are somewhat similar. I guess I, I do like this, this one a little better. Don't come out and say, well, you know, I really like that one too. I don't even know why I put this other, other image in the portfolio. We want to be positive. Tell them that I liked both images and I realized that everyone has different likes, so I went ahead and put both images in there in the hopes that one would catch your eye. And always accept suggestions or another word for this is critique. If the gallery owner doesn't feel that you're a good fit, but they like you, they're going to probably give you suggestions. Maybe telling you how to reorganize your portfolio, meaning maybe put your artist bio in the back instead of the front, and maybe cut your imagery down to 10 images instead of 20. Take these suggestions and, and try them next time. People are drawn to others that have good attitudes, so be positive. So now we're at the end of the interview. At the end of the interview, you will be told whether or not the gallery feels that you're a good fit with them. And most likely, you've already been chosen as an artist for the gallery because galleries rarely grant an interview with an artist unless they are already interested in your art meaning they've had a chance to go online and, and review your uh, website, or perhaps you'd already sent them an introductory letter um, with a mini portfolio in the hopes of them um, wanting to meet with you. So they've already most likely had a chance to view some of that artwork of yours. If they are interested, they will usually ask you for a few pieces of your artwork and ask you, do you have any artwork with you? So make sure that you have some artwork with you in your car. I can't remember a time when I approached a gallery and I wasn't asked if I had uh, real artwork with me. And they will keep that artwork and they will tell you that they will try it out, meaning they're gonna put it right on their walls or on a pedestal and they're gonna see what sort of feedback they get from their patrons. So you're gonna make sure, wanna make sure that you can leave artwork with the gallery, which also means that you're going to need to have an inventory list already prepared that you can leave with the gallery. And the gallery is gonna love you for this because it's gonna show how incredibly organized you are. Galleries are constantly telling me, Kathy, we love you because you are so organized and it makes our life so much easier. So go ahead and make sure that that inventory list is already prepared with the medium of the artwork, the size, an image on a CD that they can then put up on their website immediately, and pricing. And then the signing of the agreement. 
The signing of the agreement. We talked about having this in your portfolio tucked back into a pocket somewhere where they don't, um, the reviewer doesn't see it until they've decided that, yeah, we're going to take you on as an artist. The agreement is like a contract. A contract has much more in the way of, of legal terminology, so any more, they're referred to as agreements because they don't have as much legal terminology, but they're saying basically the same thing. And within that contract, you're going to want to make sure that they have insurance, commission, checks, and duration mentioned within it. Now, with the insurance, you're going to want to make sure that the gallery can cover your artwork if it's been damaged or stolen. And with a commission, that should state what percentage of each sale you will receive and what percentage the gallery will receive. A typical percentage is anywhere between 30 to 50 percent, and 30 being the very good end of how much of the sales that the gallery is receiving, meaning that you will receive 70 percent of the sales. Checks. You want to know when you will receive your check. Some galleries send the check out immediately after a sale has been completed, but most typically galleries will wait until a certain point in the month to send all of their checks out to their artists. One of my galleries sends their checks out just after the first of every month. Another sends out checks the 15th of the month after the sale was made. And that can be a little confusing, <laughs> but they're very regular about it. And the duration, how long would they like to try you out as an artist? My gallery typically does not take an artist for two years automatically. The gallery usually states within the agreement that they will take you for six months or for a year. A year is a good amount of time because you've gone through an entire cycle. You've gone through all the seasons and they may very well only have sales within the summer months or within a few months of the year and so in order for you to go through an entire cycle that will tell both you and the gallery whether you're a good fit. Success! So your interview is a huge success and you'll soon be delivering more artwork to the gallery. You want to be sure to send a thank you note to the gallery and this goes for whether or not you've been invited into the gallery. So if you've gone through the interview process and you, you've both decided that, you know, this isn't really the best fit for either of us, go ahead and send them a thank you note for meeting with you. The gallery world is extremely small and I have had gallery owners from one coast to the other that have known each other and many of the same galleries within a region, um, the owners know each other. And if you have acted in such a way that has impressed them, they may reach out a lending hand and tell you, hey, you know, I know a perfect gallery for you, and why don't you go check out such and such gallery? Or they'll give your name to a gallery owner in another state, knowing that you'll be a good fit. Thank them for their willingness to meet with you and look at your art and tell them that you're looking forward to working with them if you've been taken on um, by them as an artist. Because they will remember your thoughtfulness as well as your professional attitude toward your art career. Remember that every time you interact with a gallery, you are going through another interview. This is a business relationship and you need to stay focused. You need to also be polite. The gallery wants to know what you're working on, your availability, and when they can expect more work from you, so you want to stay in touch with them. I never let a gallery go um, any longer than I'd say three months without my getting in touch with them if they haven't gotten in touch with me. Just to let them know what I'm up to, checking in to see if they need me to rotate artwork out to keep it fresh if things haven't been selling, and asking them how sales have been. They want a relationship with you just as much as you want one with them so that they can better sell your artwork. And they can't sell you very well if they don't know you, so show up to your art receptions and call to see how those sales are going. Communicate with them regularly 
and always be polite and courteous. I want to mention again that there's a market for all artwork. So don't think that there isn't a gallery out there for you. You just need to find it. If your artwork is, is high quality and distinctive, then it's just a matter of time before you locate that gallery and have buyers for your particular kind of art. This is a business relationship, which means it's a two-way street. If they're not returning your calls or emails, then something's wrong and you need to get to the bottom of it as soon as possible. On the other hand, the gallery wants to make selling your artwork as easy as possible, so keep them updated. And brainstorm together to come up with new events and ways of selling your artwork and stay focused on what is important to you and do not overcommit yourself. If you have more than one gallery, you're going to want to make sure that you have enough artwork for both of them, not only to feed them more artwork when sales have happened, but also to keep the artwork fresh, so you, you'll want to rotate out. So don't let other things get in the way of you painting, or you sculpting, or you throwing on the wheel, or you fabricating um, that new and best piece of artwork that needs to always be in the forefront of your mind. So you need time for both yourself and your art, so you need to stay focused. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I do hope that you found this webinar useful. If so, you will also find my book, Prosper, a success book for artists, just as useful. It contains uh, not only how to approach an art gallery in more depth, but how to organize your way to success, how to write artist statements and biographies, um, resume writing for the artist, and much, much more. It can be purchased on Amazon. And I'd like to again thank you one last time for joining me today.